In this video, we'll examine how to select elements based on their attributes. I've opened the finish file so you can see the end result of our exercise. I'll begin with the button selecting by attribute, and you'll see that these elements were selected because they contain a specific attribute. I'll refresh the page to show you a selection based on the language, in this case, the language being Spanish. Now I'll select anything with red in it. This will include this red paragraph text, as well as this inline red text, and even this paragraph because it has a background color of red. After a refresh, I'll now select hypertext links that link to PDF documents. This page has several links, but only those that link to PDFs are selected. I'll refresh the page and we'll take a look at our last selector, which is to select any element if the name contains select. Of course, the buttons are selected because they're all select elements or select tags whose type is equal to button. Let's take a look at our source code and we'll get started with these selectors. First, we'll examine the document structure. So locate your body tag and you'll see we have a header followed by a paragraph, the input buttons that drive our jQuery and the finished file, a section of the document, and this is a new HTML tag called section with a new HTML5 attribute as well called content editable. And that allows the end user to edit this text. Now following a heading, we have two paragraphs, one in English and one whose language attribute is set to the two letter abbreviation for Spanish. That ends this section and we begin a second section with similar text. The only difference being the content editable attribute is not part of this second section as it is with the first one. Then we have an H3 followed by a series of paragraphs, each with a different CSS class applied to it. Red text, blue text, and some paragraphs with no CSS applied at all. Below that we have a heading 2 with some resources. And the resources are paragraphs with hypertext links inside that link to a couple of PDFs and to the jQuery web page. So that's the basic structure of the document that we'll be working with. Let's head up to the script block and you'll see that we have a shortcut method for checking to see if the document object has been loaded into the document object model. And then we have the code that invokes the CSS function that turns the background color of the various selected elements to yellow. So the only thing missing is the selectors. Our first comment is to add a selector that selects only the editable text. If you recall, those were the sections down here that had the new attribute called content editable. If you're not familiar with that, let's just take a look at that in the browser. Under the heading that says you can edit this content now in HTML, you can highlight that text and you can edit that text. And that's due to the new content editable attribute. The second section block does not have that attribute, so although the text can be highlighted, it cannot be edited. Back in our source code, we want to write a jQuery uh, selector that will highlight that section that has been made editable by that attribute content editable equals true. So let's head up to the selector and we'll replace the selector placeholder text with one that will get us that section. We begin with a very simple tag selector, and the tag that we're looking for is the section tag but we're only looking for the section tag that has that attribute that we're looking for. The attribute and the selector are denoted by square brackets. Inside these square brackets, we place the name of the attribute that must be present in that element in order for it to be selected, and that was the content editable attribute. So let's save and test this, and we want to select by attribute, and that first section that was editable was selected. And you can see it remains editable. It's just now attached to the jQuery that selected it and highlighted it in yellow as well. Let's return to our source code and take a look at our next function. Here we want to select only text whose language attribute is set to Spanish. So again, we'll highlight our selector placeholder text. The element we're looking for is a paragraph whose language attribute is equal to Spanish. This selector is very similar to the one we just wrote. We still want a tag selector because we're still looking for p tags, but we need the square brackets to indicate that we only want p tags that have a language attribute. So we could say, get me all the p tags that have a language attribute, and that would probably work in this case, 
because if we look at the paragraphs, the only ones in Spanish are also the only ones that have a language attribute. But if I were to modify this one and give it a language attribute of English or some other language, then finding all the language attributes would not give us uh, only the ones in Spanish. So in this case, where there are multiple language attributes, we want to be a bit more specific. So we're going to modify this by saying that not only do language attributes have to be present in the p tag, but they have to be equal to es. A single equal sign will serve as our comparison operator here. Now you may be used to typing two equal signs for this, so this is only going to return paragraph tags that have language attributes that are equal to es. Let's save this and test it in the browser. The only paragraphs we should see selected here are the two paragraphs that are written in Spanish. Back in our source code, we'll move on to the next function. Our goal here is to create a selector that selects only elements that have the word red somewhere in them. As you can see, we have some alternative methods here that have been commented out. So we haven't spent a lot of time on this, but the reality is that there is often more than one way to write a selector that selects the same wrapped set of elements. So in this example, we'll explore some different methods. We'll begin with a selector that looks for a class attribute, but one whose value begins with the letters RED. We start with square bracket notation, which denotes an attribute, and the attribute we're looking for is the class. But rather than say it's equal to RED, we want to use the pipe character to indicate that it begins with the letters RED style tag, we can see that we have two selectors that begin with RED. The one that begins with RED-BG and the one that begins with RED-Text. So the selector should locate any elements that point to these class selectors here. Let's save our code and test this in the browser and we'll click the button that says select anything with red in it and you can see that it did select any element with red in it. Let's look at the alternative techniques now. Let's go back to our source code and let's comment that first selector that we just wrote and uncomment the second one and we'll replace the add selector with another selector that will work. In the previous examples we used the pipe character to indicate that the class attribute must contain or begin with the letters RED. In this example we use the caret prior to the equal sign and this stipulates that RED must be the first three characters of this class attribute whereas the pipe indicated that it could have been the first three characters, but those characters could also have appeared anywhere, and they still would have been selected. You can save and test this file, and we'll click the same button, select anything with red in it, and we should see the same results. In this next case, the asterisk denotes all class attributes that contain the letters RED. So you can save and test this file, and you should see the same results. In the previous examples, we used selectors for the class attribute that denoted whether the attribute's value began with the letters RED or contained the character's RED. In this next selector, we're looking for the value of an attribute that ends with a particular set of characters. And for this, we locate the next function and we'll replace the selector text with a real jQuery selector. In this case, we're going to select hypertext links that link to PDF files. So basically, we're looking for an href attribute, but it also must contain a certain value. And the value of that attribute must end with the characters .pdf. So we begin with our square bracket notation to denote an attribute. We could prefix it with a tag first. Now that's not something we did with the previous exercises because we were looking for any class in those exercises. But here we know what tag we're looking for. We're looking for a tags. And we'll also note that those a tags must have an href attribute. Here's where it gets a little different because the attribute must be equal to the string .pdf but that wouldn't make up the entire string. That in fact should be only the last four characters. So rather than use the equal sign we're going to say ends with and that would be the dollar sign. To summarize we're looking for anchor tags that have href attributes whose ending characters denoted by the dollar sign, are equal to a dot, and a p, and a d, and an f. So we'll save this and test this in the browser. Before I click the button, let me scroll down a bit, and I'll show you the hypertext links in this document. 
Now I'll click the button and you can see that only the links to PDF documents have been highlighted. Let's return to our source code and our very last function which requires that we make a selector that selects only elements that have a name attribute containing the word select. And you can see all of our buttons are input tags that contain the word select. So we'll change this selector with a selector that uses the wildcard to select any tag, the square brackets to denote the existence of an attribute, and that attribute is name. And in that name attribute value anywhere by way of the wildcard, equals select. So it doesn't matter if the select is at the beginning, the end, or the middle of the name. So you can proofread that code and then you can save and test it in the browser. In this exercise we learned how to use jQuery selectors to select elements based on the existence of attributes or the specific values of those attributes within our web page.